just another Ender 3, or is it? There you are, welcome back. The Creality Ender 3 S1. It was born from a stream. <laughs> Power on. And we had a good time with it on that stream. And quite honestly, at the time, I was massively impressed with the build quality and the ease at which everything went together and started printing. And when the stream ended, I was just as astonished as I was towards the middle when everything was happening. We, we put it together, it was packaged great. Like, this has been a great stream. This is, there was no drama, everything worked. Everything's still working. Plus, it was Taco Wednesday. Yum. It's raining tacos. The Ender 3 platform has always been a best selling, most recommended, typical machine that people talk about for beginners. But the problem is you usually have to ask the question, well, what is your technical level? Most Ender 3 machines, at least before this one, required some level of TLC before you could get optimum printing from them. There have been a lot of Ender 3 revisions over the years. And in fact, most people, when they see a bed slinging 3D printer, they say things like, oh, it's just another Ender 3 clone. Well, this is the S1 and it's not. The S1 from Creality is a little bit different. And here are some of the standard features. The Ender 3 S1 is direct drive thanks to Creality's new Sprite extruder. And it does auto bed leveling with the CR touch. It's like a BL touch, but the BL has been replaced with a CR. It's got a 4.3 inch screen that won't do anything if you touch it because you have to use a knob to adjust things. And it's running a 32 bit board with TMC 2208 stepper drivers. You'll find dual lead screws on this thing. It's got a filament runout sensor and you'll find tensioners on X and Y. Officially, the Ender 3 S1 is 220 on X, 220 on Y, and 270 on Z or Z. That nozzle is gonna go to 260C, and the bed itself will get to 100C. At time of filming, if you go to the Creality website, you'll be able to pick this up for 415 US dollars, but if you go to Amazon, various sellers are going to have it for around $429. Right out of the gate, test prints from this machine looked fantastic. Like, fantastic. There were some prints where the clearance wasn't there and the prints fused because they were print in place models, but I really get the feeling some more time with this machine and the slicer would make that successful. The S1 handled some tougher prints pretty well. There was the Moon City by, oh, I always murder his name and I'm so sorry, Jaka Sepanen. I hope I got that right. There's also the Crystal Dragon from one of my favorite 3D modelers, Cinderwing 3D. Both of those models look fantastic and the S1 blew me away with the quality on those things. PET on the machine was super easy to do. You just modified some of the PLA temps to PETG temps and you were off to the races. Even TPU on this machine printed extremely well and I was really happy to see that. As I like to say, it's not all unicorn farts and rainbows. There are some things that need attention. And right off the bat, we have to talk about the bed that Creality ships with the Ender 3 S1. At first, adhesion was great, if not edging on too good. It is a flex plate and you can remove it and bend it all around, that's fine. But now after about 10, 11 prints or so, adhesion is a little iffy. It still holds down, for the most part, my recommendation is if you had this machine, you would probably replace that build plate with another flexible build surface. Also, the Sprite extruder. I like that Creality is going with this sort of modular design, but the fan angle on the front is extreme. And it got me curious because a fan at that angle could suck up filament wisps a lot easier Plus, at that angle, any latent heat from the bed is going to get sucked up and blown onto the model, and so you're not cooling the filament as efficiently as you can. My guess is most likely this won't be an issue up until it is. That storage space in the little pull-out drawer you have in the front was 
actually nice. It's kind of large and I'm glad that's a part of this machine. The Ender 3 S1 is also fairly quiet. It's noticeably quiet, I think is the right way to say it. The UI was easy to get around and I had no problems finding what I needed to find. The Sprite extruder from Creality, I like the direction that they're going. I think this shows promise and I love having this machine as a direct drive machine. The Creality Ender 3 S1 feels much more like a refined product and not something that you buy to tinker with. It feels finished. I really do like this direction from Creality for a machine like this. I could easily see the Ender 3 S1 in big box stores with retail packaging, with families walking by and buying it and having fun with it. Sorry, buddy. Oh. This is easily the best Creality 3D printer I've ever reviewed, ever. It's easy to assemble, it prints multiple filament types extremely well, and it's just the epitome of a really fun 3D printing experience. Yay! Well, those are my thoughts on the Creality Ender 3 S1. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this machine. Do you have one? And if so, how is it printing for you? Are you looking to get one? Is this helpful in your quest? Let me know down in the comments. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. And as always, high five.